last time on the Salty Siren. A famous naval commander that you might not know about. He has served in both the U.S. military and the British military, commanding corvettes, hunting submarines. We are, of course, talking about Lafayette Ron Hubbard, the founder of Dianetics and Scientology. No shit. Lord. Colonel Merle Smith, the U.S. Naval Attaché to Australia, accused Hubbard of sending Don Izzy Dro, quote, 3,000 miles out of her way, end quote. Hubbard is not temperamentally fitted for independent command, end quote, and basically asked to have Hubbard removed and ordered to, quote, other duty under immediate supervision of a more senior officer, end quote. In the early hours of May 19th, 1943, PC-815, its sonar detected what the crew thought was an enemy sub off Cape Lookout, 10 or 12 miles offshore. Hubbard ordered attacks six times, firing a total of 35 depth charges and many rounds from rifles and pistols uh, at what Hubbard believed were two Imperial <laughs> Japanese subs. Rear Admiral Braisted, quote, considered this officer lacking in essential qualities of judgment, leadership, and cooperation. He acts without forethought as to probable results. He is believed to have been sincere in his efforts to make his ship efficient and ready, not considered qualified for command or promotion at this time. Recommend duty on a larger vessel or he can be properly supervised, end quote. Something about supervision comes up in every single quote from us as superior. Just like, watch this man. Do not let him out of your sight. O'er the wild windy sea I can hear her calling to me, so let's heave away, haul away, and fill our eyes with the shore. Calls to friends, ale and light, and a tale to brighten the night. So heave away, haul away, and heed the siren song. So, um, Hubbard continues his campaign of getting assigned to ships, getting dunked on by, uh, serious superior officers, um, and being sent somewhere else. So the next stop on his journey, uh, is with the USS Algol and some shore service. So... The same day Hubbard was sent a formal letter of admonition, basically meaning, you know, what it, this letter is. It, it's saying you're in a lot of trouble, and it details exactly what your punishment is going to be. Um, on this very day, Hubbard reported uh, he was sick with upper chest pains and possible malaria. So, okay. Um, here's a note to himself about this sickness. Uh, quote, your stomach trouble you used as an excuse to keep the Navy from punishing you. Ooh. So, kind of echoing the I thing from earlier. Okay. Hmm. Um, although this was turned out to be legit or this did turn out to be a legit um, he was determined to have been suffering from a duodenal ulcer which is a break in the inner lining of your small intestine I believe oh geez I mean that sounds like it sucks yeah it sounds it, awful <laughs> yeah but um, he got better, um, or it got better enough that 
In October 1943, he joined the crew of the USS Algol and attacked cargo ship. Um, this was a ship that was being prepared to for the Pacific Theater. Um, it was going through training exercises at this time off the coast of California. Um, during this time, uh, while he was on the ship, he applied for a training course at the School of Military Government, uh, capital letters, which uh, was established by Princeton University. Um, it is not a part of the university itself. Um, despite this, uh, Hub Hub, of course, claims that he was a Princeton student. Ah, uh, of course. Um, Why wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, his commanding officer approved of this for some reason um, and rating, rated him to be, for some reason, of, quote, excellent personal and military character, end quote. Though he, quote, is very temperamental and often has his feelings hurt, end quote. It's like, yeah, he's a good dude, but also he's a little bitch. Um, he is the emotional fortitude of a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send him to school of military government. So, uh, his time aboard the Algol, like most of the ships he's on, it was very short. Um, he was kicked off after supposedly discovering quote an attempt at an attempt at sabotage, end quote. Uh, consisting of a Coke bottle filled with gasoline with a cloth wick inserted, concealed among the ship's cargo. Um, he was ordered to leave the ship a few hours later. Hmm. So, yeah, so this is interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if he planted this to seem like a hero that he uncovered sabotage or something but okay I mean it. I don't well I mean it is a boat if you start a fire on a boat it's usually really bad news so hmm so kind of a weird occurrence um yeah yeah. Uh, then for that school of military government that I was talking about, um, he <laughs> flunked out. Um, of course. Of course. Uh, and he did not qualify for an overseas posting. Then, let's see. In April 1945, he got sick again with his ulcer. It was a chronic ulcer. Um, and he spent the rest of the war in Oak Knoll Naval Hospital in Oakland, California. Um, of course, the Church of Scientology's spin on this is, quote, eventual combat wounds would finally preclude him from serving with American occupation forces, end quote. They, they do have a way of spinning everything he does to just be as positive as possible, don't they? <laughs> yes. Uh, then, uh, on October of 1945, he was cleared for duty uh, onshore, um, preferably within the continental United States. Um, and then... On December 6th, 1945, he was mustered out of active service, and he didn't resign his commission until uh, October 1950. Um, and in Hubbard style, of course, this is all his idea. Um, the Church of Scientology says Hubbard quit because he was just too big brain for the Navy. Um, After flunking out of school. 
<laughs> right. Naturally. Uh, quote, the U.S. Navy had attempted to monopolize all his researches and force him to work on a project, uh, quote, to make man more suggestible, end quote. And when he was unwilling, tried to blackmail him by ordering him back to active duty to perform this function. Having many friends, he was able to instantly resign from the Navy and escape this trap, end quote. Hmm. Yeah, then, I, I mean, I, I kind of wouldn't put it past the military to do something like that, but going by his previous steadfast truthfulness and everything he does, <laughs> um, I, I think it's probably bull, but hey, let's, let's see what else what other things he ends up doing. Yeah. So, um, from Hubbard himself, uh, quote, the, the, the office of Naval intelligence right here in Washington, DC threatened to call me to active duty to use what I knew about the mind. Uh, this officer from the office of Naval research came to me right here in Washington and he wanted me to go on as a civil employee in order to use what I knew of the mind to make men more suggestible. Um, <laughs> and I smiled a feline smile. And oh, I said, no. quote, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And he, the officer... Um, smiled like something out of Faust and said to me, quote, well, all you have to do is say no, and I will call you back to active duty because you are still, because you still are an officer of the United States Navy, end quote. And with that purr, he excited. Um, so I went down here to, uh, to the Washington Navy Yard the Potomac River Naval Command and got my resignation accepted, end quote. Man, just all of that build up and he said, quote, no. No. <laughs> After smiling a feline smile. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he definitely um, meowed a little bit or purred a little bit as he said no. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard is a furry. We've confirmed it. <laughs> confirmed. Hub Hub Furryson. Oh man. Uh. So that's that's all great. Um. Uh, a little addendum at the end. According to the U.S. Navy, quote, there is no evidence on record of an attempt to recall him to active duty, end quote. Shocker. It's almost as if everything he says is unsubstantiated. <laughs> Do be that almost. way. <laughs> so, that is the... We, we still have some more to cover, but that is the end of L. Ron Hubbard's service in the U.S. military. Um, as I said, he released his commission in October of 1950. Um, so, quite a, quite a journey. Quite a I, journey indeed. A journey completely factual in nature. No contradictions. <laughs> With time spent serving in both the North Atlantic and the North Pacific. <laughs> uh, commanding corvettes and hunting submarines all over. Um... I thought we would, kind of as a recap, go over all the 
wounds, awards, and just some more bullshit um, that uh, he claims and all that. So let's begin with, uh, you know, I if there is record, I didn't dig that hard. Um, if there's a record saying when he said these exact quotes, I don't know, um, because it would be helpful, but they all contradict each other. So we're just going to blast through them. Okay. So poor hub hub, uh, quote, blinded with optic nerves and lame with physical injuries to hip and back. Yet I worked my way back to fitness and strength in less than two years using only what I know about man and his relationship with the universe. End quote. Huh. All right. <laughs> yeah, he, he basically <laughs> he basically claims that this period was uh, a big moment for Dianetics and how he, you know, cured himself of his war wounds. Um. Then, according to the Church of Scientology, quote uh, Hubbard was flown home in the late spring of 1942 in the secretary of secretary of the Navy's private plane as the first U S returned casualty from the far East End quote. Um, and a 2006 publication goes further, uh, describing him as quote, the first American casualty of South Pacific combat. So, uh, not true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just not. <laughs> um, Thomas Moulton, uh, Hubbard's uh, executive, uh, second in command on the PC-815, uh, testifies that Hubbard told him that he was shot in the Dutch East Indies and his eyes were damaged by the flash of a large caliber gun. Um, in other lectures, he says his eyes were injured because bombs went off in, or quote, bombs went off in my face, end quote. So who knows where he got the them eyes damaged. <laughs> Everywhere, man. It's constantly. Uh, we continue on. Um, Hubbard told the sci-fi writer Robert Heinlein um, that both of his feet uh, in um, brackets, parentheses, it says drumhead injury, um, when his last ship was bombed. Um, first of all, he was never on a ship that was bombed. Um, and a drumhead injury is not a foot injury. It is an injury of the eardrum. It does make more sense. <laughs> it does indeed. <laughs> so I don't know if this is because of Hubbard's ignorance about medicine. Um, he just shouted out a common injury that happens in World War II and said that his feet were broken. Um. Yeah, between that and, like, saying, oh, yeah, I sunk this submarine that was, like, named as being sunk somewhere else, I wonder if he was just, like, picking up the names... And just using that to further his lies. Yeah, I. It's a common theme throughout this. It's he just sprinkles in things that are real, um, and hope it adds some credibility to the bullshit he's saying. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Interesting, to say the least. 
Uh, Heinlein also reports that, uh, quote, Hubbard had a busy war, <laughs> sunk four times and wounded again and again, end quote. Um, so Hubbard is said to be twice pronounced dead from multiple Church of Scientology things. Um, they say he spent a year in the Naval Hospital where he, quote, utilized in the study of endocrine substances and protein, Qu- uh, end quote. Mason, just, you're the just, biologist. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> just all protein? They yep, just studied just all protein? Okay. All of them. Well, you know, that that checks out. <laughs> oh, you're a biologist? Name every protein. <laughs> Name every protein. Hubbard can. <laughs> <laughs> Hubbard has all of them, huh? <laughs> he invented them. Um, the techniques that he developed, as in Dianetics, um, quote, made possible not only his recovery from injury, but helped other servicemen to regain their health, end quote. What a guy. Um, Hubbard said that he had been hospitalized because, quote, I was utterly exhausted. I had just been in combat theater after combat theater. You see, with no rest, no nothing between, end quote. Despite, I'm not even going to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> you said despite, and the, the, the decision branch just exploded in your mind. <laughs> there, there were a lot of options for despite, so. <laughs> oh. Um kind of calling out Hubbard on his BS. Um, the VA, as in the Veterans Association, um, they confirmed that Hubbard, quote, receives $160 a month in compensation for disabilities incurred during the Second World War. However, the conditions listed as being 40% disabling are duodenal ulcer, bursitis um, in the right shoulder, inflammation of something um arthritis and get ready for this one blafero conjunctivitis all right and Mason, quote. biology knowledge what the hell is that um <laughs> that's a great question with the biological I mean, so it, powers I mean, of this Google. goes the conjunctivitis is going to go back to his eye. So, like, extreme pink eye. <laughs> okay. I mean, is, is my guess kind of thing. Conjunctivitis, I think, is more commonly known as pink eye, from my understanding. So. Well, um, the Navy Department, or a Navy Department spokesperson, um, has stated that, uh, quote, an examination of Mr. Hubbard's record does not reveal any evidence of injuries suffered while in the service of the United States Navy. Are we um, sure he wasn't hit by the antenna? <laughs> <laughs> Just right down on his dome. <laughs> um, Hubbard claimed to the VA about injuries into the 1950s Uh, Well, after the founding of Dianetics, you know, which uh, allegedly provide, quote, a cure for the very ailments that plague the author himself then and throughout his life, including allergies, arthritis, ulcers, and heart problems. Mm. So, despite being the Dr. Manhattan of protein, um, (laughs) he still got a check from the VA every month for $160. Interesting. I, okay, even though they have no record of anything besides possible pink eye? <laughs> right. 
Which, by the way, it is Pink Eye. I did actually okay. Google something for this podcast. <laughs> okay, so that that helps then. So, 40% disabling. We've got a duodenal ulcer, um, which is it's a chronic thing. So, it sounds like it kind of comes and goes and isn't, you know, completely disabling. Um, bursitis and arthritis, um, both inflammation of some, some kind and pink eye. Those are Hubbard's reasons for getting compensation from uncle Sam for his 40, 40 percent. Yeah. Disability. Interesting. <laughs> so, um, now let's pivot and see some other BS in the Department of Awards and Honors that Hubbard has received. Um, Church of Scientology uh, claims, quote, Hubbard was highly decorated under fire, end quote. Um, winning a number of medals, the like the last section is very contentious. How many? So, in a 1968 interview with British journalists, uh, Hubbard showed his visitors 16 war medals that he claimed to have been awarded. Um, a few months after that, the Church of Scientology published a quote data sheet on Lafayette Ron Hubbard. Uh, end quote, that stated that he had been awarded, quote, 21 medals and palms, end quote. Uh, this data sheet, uh, well, let's not glaze past this. We already have an inconsistency between the number of medals. Um, I, sorry, I, to butt in here, um, according to a quick uh, Guinness World Record search, the most decorated U.S. soldier ever received 24 medals. <laughs> and he is claiming to have received 21. So, okay. a little perspective there. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's that's great um, for what's coming up next. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, so, this data sheet... Um, also lists uh, this is the official data sheet that the church released uh, about his service in the US military um, it lists Hubbard as the commanding officer of the USS Howland H-O-W-L-A-N-D uh, however there has never been a USS Howland in the history of the United States <laughs> So, hmm. Big old hmm. <laughs> um, the Church of Scientology asks the Navy to supply 17 medals uh, at one point, including the Purple Heart and the Navy Commendation Medal. Um, both of these, uh, or of those 17 medals, they're requesting many of them with bronze service stars, which denote participation in military campaigns or multiple bestowals of the same reward or award. Um, the <laughs> Navy actually sent some medals, surprisingly. Um, they only sent four. Noting, quote, the records in this bureau fail to establish Mr. Hubbard's entitlement to the other medals and awards listed in your response, end quote. So, so were the four they sent him participation medals? We will get to that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, actually... I would need to look up which which four they sent him. I'm not sure about that. 
Hmm. Um, well, let's see. Let, let's see if I can get to it. Um, contradictions continue. Later, uh, Hubbard circulated a picture of 21 medals. Uh, he claims to have won 28. Um, so we have just shattered the ceiling on how many medals you can win. I'm the most uh, decorated soldier in U.S. history. <laughs> yes. Um, he says uh, of those 28 medals, seven are missing because they were awarded in secret by the high naval command to him because they were embarrassed that he had sunk two Japanese submarines in the United States, quote, backyard, end quote. Huh. And then, and then, and then, and then, uh, a 1994 biography published by the church says he won 29 awards. Uh, in 1990, another church official record of service claimed 21 medals. Um, <laughs> there's uh, some noteworthy inclusions in here. Um, is the unit citation, which is all only awarded by the president to combat units that perform particularly meritorious service. Then, we <laughs> this is a especially funny one to me, the British Victory Medal, an award issued for this service in the British Armed Forces in the First World War, and that was never awarded by itself. So, <clears throat> a medal awarded for by a military he did not participate in, in a war he didn't fight in, that can't be given to a single person. And he had it. He had it. He's just that good. <laughs> Dude, this is like actually some full on steamed hams level <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. Like, you're telling me that you have <laughs> this medal that can only be assigned to groups from a nation that you are not from, that you did not serve with, that was handed out in a war you did not fight in. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> May I see it? No. No. <laughs> oh, God. Uh... <laughs> Continuing on, uh, he got a allegedly a purple heart with a palm, uh, implying two wounds received in action. However, the U.S. Navy uses gold and silver stars, not a palm, to indicate multiple wounds. Um, then, uh, let's see. He got a distributed photograph of medals. Oh, so the photograph features a National Defense Service Medal and the Armed Forces Reserve Medal, which were not even created uh, until Hubbard had left active service. Oof. He did, so he really didn't bother to do any research before coming up with this story, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, let me look up when he died. Um, this was from the Church of Scientology in 1990. Okay. So... He might have been old as hell and, you know, comatose. I'm not sure. Okay. That's more acceptable, I guess. <laughs> okay, he died in 86. <laughs> so, so the Church of Scientology uh, posthumously awarded him all of these insane medals. Okay, I that that is a bit better, but it it's better in that it wasn't Elron himself. <laughs> God damn it, Scientology! Why why do you have to be the way you are? 
Hold on. Uh, it says L. Ron Hubbard is associated with the film Battlefield Earth. I want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a uh, good little factoid to drop. Um, I'll move on. Um, there's more to go. Uh, the LA Times reported and the NPR, and NPR uh, wow. National Public Radio confirmed a U.S. Navy record, which, quote, indicates Hubbard received four medals during his Navy career, as well as two marksmanship medals, end quote and noted, quote, discrepancies, <laughs> end quote, with the Scientology version. No shit. Um, the uh, American, so these are the medals that Hubbard received. So he got the American Defense Service Medal, awarded to all members of the military in active service at the time of December 1941, uh, attack on Pearl Harbor. We have the American Campaign Medal awarded to all service members who had performed duty in the American Theater of Operations during the war. So, uh, you fought on the 48 states, I guess, the continental United States, or performed duty, rather. Um, the uh, Asiatic Dash Pacific Campaign Medal awarded to all who had served in the Pacific Theater, um, and the World War II Victory Medal awarded to all who served in World War II. So yeah, all the awards LRH won were his CYC Soccer Participation Trophies. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. It does. A whole lot more. So, the Church of Scientology alleges incomplete and falsified records. Because of course they do. Um, they claim this is backed up by L. Fletcher Prouty, a former U.S. Army colonel, who said that Hubbard's records had been falsified to cover up his intelligence background. Uh, he claims that, um, you know, Hubbard had done secret activities. Um, it is also worth noting that this colonel is a prominent conspiracy theorist, best known for advocating the JFK assassination, con uh, conspiracy, oh. um, uh, many theories surrounding that, um, who is associated with an anti-Semitic liberty lobby group. Um, All right. And <laughs> was also uh, involved with the Lyndon LaRouche organization. Um, Lyndon LaRouche is a wild guy. Cult stuff, Marxism, extremism. So we got a credible source there. Oh yeah, real, real credible dudes vouching for our boy Hub Hub. So, after all this crap, um, you guys and all your listeners might be uh, relieved to know that um, Hubbard has been called out on a lot of this bullshit. Um, so, in the 60s and 70s, surrounding, you know, kind of everything around Hubbard and especially his military service, um, they were kind of calling him out on this stuff. Um, Jerry Armstrong was an archivist for Scientology who was uh, amassing research to write a official authorized biography of L. Ron Hubbard. So he was gearing up for a real big project. Um, then in early 1982, this Jerry Armstrong guy became disillusioned with the church 
Um, he was declared a suppressive person, which means an enemy of Scientology. Uh, Nicole Kidman is a, is a suppressive person, the ex-wife of Tom Cruise. Um, okay. Armstrong uh, then made copies of all this paperwork and data he had uh, uncovered for safekeeping. Um, so as you could imagine, all that copying did not make the Church of Scientology happy. The church sued uh, over breach of confidence, theft, and invasion of privacy. Um, this all tumbled into a four four weeks of testimony um, where they brought up our boy Thomas Moulton, uh, Hubbard's brief second in command. Um, he testified about a lot of the BS that we've already heard. Um, uh, and this is where the shit about... Um, Hubbard being involved in the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941 and that he was that he had been the only survivor of his destroyer which had gone down with all hands save Hubbard himself yeah um, I'm gonna press X to ju- doubt <laughs> right Seems unlikely. the judge that was in charge of this case um He found Armstrong's, uh, the archivist, he found his fears of persecution by the church were reasonable and him uh, copying those documents uh, was also reasonable uh, because of that. Um, This judge's verdict was, quote, the evidence portrays a man who has been virtually a pathological liar when it comes to his history, background, and achievements, end quote. That, that sums it up. Yeah. That really does. <laughs> Finally, someone said it. Um, the British, a British judge. So I like this because of his claims about the British, uh, he claims to be in the British Naval Navy. Um, a British judge ruled in a case heard at the Royal Courts of Justice that Hubbard had made a number of false claims about his military career. From that judge, quote, uh, that Hubbard was a much decorated war hero, he was not. That he commanded a Corvette squadron, he did not. And that he was awarded the Purple Heart, (laughs) a gallantry decoration for those wounded in action. He was not wounded and was not decorated that he was crippled and blinded in the war and cured himself with Dianetics techniques. He was not crippled and was not blinded. Yeah, I, I, I'd say I agree with those statements. So, um, I wanted to... You know what, we'll end it there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much ends our dive into the military career of L. Ron Hubbard. Otherwise known as Hub Hub the Great. <laughs> well, Great Hub well, thank you for that, Jack. That was very interesting to hear of good old Hub Hub's life before starting Scientology, which we know has been such a great contribution to this world. Um, yeah, wow. He, uh, he really bullshitted, like, everything he could, didn't he? Every single thing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, dear listeners... I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Salty Siren and its many tales of Hub Hub the Great. 
to close us out, we like to do a little segment where we just talk for just a little bit about things we've been doing outside of the podcast, outside of the world of naval history. And so, Mason, as our, our guest today, what's been going on with you? How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing well. I, uh, I, I currently have a, a nine-month-old puppy who, according to Google, is going through her um, quote-unquote rebellious teen stage. So I have been enjoying <laughs> um, puppy training classes and lots of frustrating hours of trying to train a dog to not look into your soul and bark at you <laughs> at home. It's been very enjoyable. It it very much sounds like it. Jack, what have you been doing? I have been uh, listening to more Ben Folds recently. Um, okay. Great guy, great musician. Um, uh, wrote the soundtrack for uh, Over the Hedge. <laughs> so, <laughs> what a movie! If you were wondering why that movie, why that movie's soundtrack slaps so hard, it's because of him. Okay, I can't say that I've ever wondered that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a uh, he's just really cool. Um, he's really great at uh, showing and not telling, you know, like a like a good movie or a book. But check yeah. him out; he's awesome. I I will have to I. I have to say that I have just the most surface level of knowledge in regards to Ben Folds, so I'll have to I'll have to give it a listen. What is your knowledge level of Over the Hedge? <laughs> <laughs> Even less. I saw it when I was a kid. I was not around at the house when you guys watched it, so. Oh man. Well, my personal little anecdote, which I have shared with both of you previously, is that I just bought a house. My first house, in fact. And uh, it is very expensive (laughs) and also (laughs) very time-consuming. So we, we got the inspection done, and that came back spotless. And with how absolutely insane the housing market is right now, we are waiting to hear on if it appraises for how much we paid for it. And I'm kind of hoping that it doesn't, because that will mean lower monthly payments in the long run. But who knows? Congrats, you're adulting. I I am. It's Your did it. Your did it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, with that, dear listeners, thank you once again for listening to The Salty Siren. We will be back next time with a topic that we have not figured out yet. We hope you've enjoyed (laughs) Elrond Hub Hub, and we will talk to you next time. Goodbye. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, call and hear the ancient song of sailors long forgone and sailors still to be. A sweet and solemn tune spoke gently by the tide. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, fall, join the song.